at this time. Let's go to the gymnasium at the home of the Quincy High School presidents. On the left hand side of the gymnasium, you'll see the boys varsity basketball team from Quincy High School, along with head coach John Francisini and his coaches, Greg Peel and Michael Drakeo. Also present as athletic director and head fellow for Quincy High School. Tonight we're recognizing the excellence at Quincy High School, specifically in the area of athletics and focused in the area of basketball. Dan Kelly, a graduate of last year's class, tonight will be recognized as the all-time scorer of the boys basketball at Quincy High School with 1,026 career points. Tonight the ball this thousand point or this thousand twenty six point ball will be presented by Coach Francisini. As you said, basically, excellence in athletics. You see our banners in our gymnasium. You all post a banner for Dan Kelly, which is represented on the wall, and I ask Chase Clark his teammate to come and assist him in unveiling his banner that will be placed here in our gymnasium. Sound level's okay here. Is the sound level okay? Well, we want to welcome you to our coverage of uh, North Quincy, Quincy basketball. We're here for the boys game. I'm Jim Timmons, and with me is Jack Raymer. Uh, Jack, we want to welcome you, and thank you for coming aboard for tonight's boys game from Monroe McLean Gymnasium. Well, Jimmy, it's, uh, it's always a great rivalry here tonight. Uh, you're looking at two teams that are uh, having relatively good seasons, and uh, I think what you're going to see tonight is a typical Quincy, uh, North Quincy battle. They'll be diving on the floor. They'll be, uh, you know, shooting the threes, and uh, you know, it's a it's a great crowd today. I think the format to have everything done today, I think, is a good idea. You know, both athletic directors and whatever. So I think you're going to see a typical great rivalry game between, uh, you know, Quincy and North Quincy. Hey, we're going to break for a minute for the national anthem and then we'll be back.
Another great rendition of the national anthem by uh, the Quincy High School Band. Uh, we cut in from our coverage of the celebration of Dan Kelly's accomplishment as a thousand point scorer, Jack. Uh, the, before the game, uh, Principal Bob Cuther uh, introduced uh, Dan and some of his teammates from the successful team of last year and there's been a banner made up that's going to uh, hang here forever in the Quincy Gymnasium honoring Dan and his great accomplishment. Well I think Dan has had a great career obviously both in uh, probably one of the best athletes you know Quincy's had in a while and I think that's a great uh, legacy for him and uh, I'm sure he'll be proud of that as he comes back and uh, he certainly did a great job but uh, Another era has taken over, as they say, Jimmy, and we're ready to go, so we'll bring it back to you. Uh, jumping uh, for Quincy, number 44, winning the tap, Adam Jurowicz, but it goes to North Quincy, and here come the Red Raiders. Uh, quick turn over there, and it's going to be Quincy ball. Uh, here come the presidents. We got uh, bringing the ball up for Quincy, Mark Robinson. Uh, Mark pressured by Adam Wu, and there's a turnover right away for North Quincy. Penetrating with the ball, Brandon Sleeth. He couldn't finish, however. Back come Quincy. We're coast to coast right away, as uh, Jack told you. This is going to be a war up and down the court. Uh, Quincy settles into its half-court offense. Got the ball in the corner. Again, we've got Wu uh, covering Robertson. That's going to be quite a matchup inside. Rebound by number 50, Adam Vecchioni, the 5'11 junior. Here comes around the rim and in for Joe Holleran to break the scoring ice for North Quincy. Uh, Joe, see, uh, senior guard, 5'9 senior guard, Joe with the early jump, but a break the scoring ice, and it's North Quincy 2, Quincy nothing. And, as Robertson uh, penetrates around the perimeter, Adam Wu gets called for a foul. Uh, Adam's had a little problem uh, thus far. He's been dogged by a foot injury, Jack. Slowed him down a little bit. That could be a problem tonight for Adam. Well, you know, I think there's a, uh, Quincy's got a lot of young guys, and there's a nice basket by Dave Centrella. Uh, you're looking at youth against a little more experienced, maybe not Quincy team, but uh, Quincy's got a, a three or four underclassmen playing tonight, so. We'll see what the rivalry's all about as, as the game goes along. Who makes the key mistakes? You're gonna see it's pretty much this the whole game. Yeah, a really nice baseline penetration by big number 30, John O'Connell for North Quincy. He took the baseline and uh, stuck the layup and he's going to the line for the, an old-fashioned three-pointer. O'Connell sticks it and uh, North Quincy Stretch this lead to 5-2. In the corner for Quincy. Uh, it's gonna be North Quincy ball on the turnover. We've got a little logistical problem here. We're surrounded by cheerleaders now, so our views cut off, but Phil McGillicuddy inbounds the ball to Holleran. Um, Drawing the job of Phil McGillicuddy tonight, Norse Jr. Uh, star is Dave Centrella. He's playing in a man-to-man -man all over the court, denying him the ball. North Quincy's making the adjustment with Holleran. Holleran, nice penetration down the lane. Wu there to finish. Joe Holleran missed the layup, but Adam Wu in the rebound action, and North Quincy's off to an early 7-2 lead. Quincy, in its half-court offense, is a bomb by... Centrella, Hollering with a rebound, gets banged. This is tough for Ted Stevenson. Uh, a second foul on Adam Wu. He's picked up two quick ones early. Uh, Quincy's going to inbound from underneath. Uh, Stevenson's got to get Wu out, and he does so by bringing in Matt Yoey. On the inbound, Quincy gets it into low to Centrella. Centrella tied up by Holler in a very athletic play. And we got a jump ball, but it's going to remain Quincy ball on the possession arrow. Centrella to inbound. Gets it in quickly. We got a traveling violation. Kevin O'Connell. The feet moved before the dribble. 
And it's going to be Quint North Quincy ball. Quincy's coming with a full court man-to-man -man press. Uh, Joe Holleran waves everybody away. He's going to bring it up against O'Connell. Teddy Stevenson has them set up their wheel. They're going to try and look inside here. They've got uh, Holler and looking to get it low to McGillicuddy. Out top to Sleeth. Sleeth back to Holler and tries to get it to McGillicuddy. Nice steal by O'Connell. O'Connell brings it down the wing. And Quincy will set its offense. Centrella calls the play. They get it down low to Centrella again. And Centrella gets fouled by Holler. That's three team fouls on North Quincy early on in the game here, Jack. Well, I think, you know, Jimmy, is there anything else? Uh, Teddy is a veteran here, as, as John. He's going to look at fouls. He's going to look in. Uh, it could be a key factor, obviously, down the road. Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of substitutions by both teams. Uh, I know they both use a lot of guys uh, throughout the game. So that could be an issue uh, as we get down to the, uh, the end of the both the half and also to, uh, to the end of the game. So we'll keep an update on that. Okay, Jack Centrella missed both, but the uh, rebound, a nice job of stepping in and grabbing the rebound by Jurowitz. Jurowitz really has some springs here. Uh, here comes John O'Connell beating the pressure. He gets it low to Sleeth. Sleeth penetrating back out to Holleran. Holleran with a nifty layup in the lane. Nice job by Joe Holleran off the pass from Brandon Sleeth. As North Quincy up 9-4. Nice penetration by O'Connell. He's cut off by Sleeth with a help from McGillicuddy. And the ball is out to the perimeter of Vecchione, uh, who fired up an air ball. It's going to be North Quincy ball. I'll tell you, uh, early on, we see all over the court, Dave Centrella denying Phil McGillicuddy the ball. North likes to go to the talented McGillicuddy, but Centrella's not going to let them. Here's Joe Holleran over to O'Connell. O'Connell trying to get it to McGillicuddy. He can't. Now he penetrates. Nice up fake by O'Connell. Great job by John O'Connell reacting to the pressure defense of uh, the athletic Adam Jurowitz. Back comes Quincy. They're down 11 4 early, Jack. That's going to be a little surprise. Well, I think it is. And as you see, Dave Centrella up and uh, down, I think. Uh you know, one thing, Jimmy, in these games, uh, you know, the McGillicuddy's and the Centrellas, and everybody looks for the big guns, and as often in a lot of sports, you're going to see that other player come and have, a, have the game of their life. Uh, those other players are certainly great athletes, but uh, it'll be interesting to see today, uh, you know, as, as everybody keys on the big guns, uh, you know, what happens with the, what other player will step up. It could be an underclassman, could be a senior who doesn't have as much notoriety, but uh, that's what you watch in these games, and... Uh, It'll be a struggle as uh, these kids are giving it everything they have today, obviously. And yeah, we've got another substitution here for North Quincy. Uh, Joe Holleran's been under a lot of pressure the whole uh, time he's been in, so they bring in Pat Brigoli for Holleran. They're giving Holleran a little bit of a break. Uh, Brigoli's been playing great of late for North Quincy. Uh, Pat's only a junior, very athletic, one of the leaders on the football team. And... Uh, Teddy's got the talent, as you said, Jack, to go to, so he's substituting early here, trying to react to the excitement that the players feel in the adrenal rush. We've got Pat Brigoli out top playing the aggressive D on uh, Mark Robertson. Looks like we're going to have a call out top there. Uh, we missed the number here. Uh, I think the call was on Sleep. Might have gone against Sleep. Nope, the call went against Phil McGillicuddy there. Uh, North Quincy with its fourth team foul. And here come the Raiders. Pat Brigoli bringing it up against the tough man-to-man -to -man pressure of the Presidents. Gets it over to Yoey. Yoey looking inside. He penetrates himself. Get it outside to Sleeth. The jumper is a little long. Nice rebound in traffic by Robinson who gets it out to Centrella. Centrella stopped by Brigoli. Brigoli, nice D, but a nice look inside by Centrella. He gets it into Jurowitz, who finishes. Adam Jurowitz with his uh, fourth point here early in the first half. Here's John O'Connell on the wing. Back out to Slee. Slee sets the offense. They get it over to Brigoli. 
Uh, North Quincy's running what they call their wheel offense. They're trying to bring uh, Phil McGillicuddy around a series of picks after they pass the ball to the wing. And on that one, uh, Quincy got called for a grab. Uh, someone grabbed at Phil McGillicuddy as he tried to uh, get around the second pick. We don't have a number on that, but that's... You know, they're looking for him. I hope uh, this mic is working. I think uh, our cameraman says we're all set here. So. Okay. You know, Quincy again looking to uh, be on McGillicuddy, and uh, we're going to see those seconds. Okay, nice penetration by Matt Yoey, but a uh, little baby steps there in the lane under pressure, and uh, they called him for the travel. So back come the presidents. I'll tell you, Jack, it's a nice back and forth game as you predicted it would be. It's 11 8 North Quincy uh, as we're just under 10, under 11 minutes here in the first half. Centrella lines up the long jumper. That one went off the support. Bregoli on the floor, McGillicuddy rather, on the floor. There's Bregoli. It's a scrum. Bregoli has it, and here come the Red Raiders. Bregoli penetrating. He goes all the way, and he's going to get called for the charge. Pat Bregoli went like coast I to said, coast. We got red shirts and white shirts all over the floor, and I think, you know, it, it just exemplifies the game we're going to have today. And you know, I never want one to say throw out the records, but uh, I think we're in for a great uh, evening of, uh, of basketball here. So, yeah, Teddy. These guys are going to give it all they have. Okay, Teddy Stevenson brings uh, senior Mike Ketty in for Pat Bregoli. Um, there's Centrella on the baseline. Nice drop down to Jurowitz. Jurowitz did a great job of getting inside position there. Uh, the drop down recognized by Centrella, he got him the ball and Jurowitz is going to go to the line for two. Adam's not really a, you know, he's 6'3", uh, but he knows how to use his body and I think that's really helped him uh, over the uh, last couple of years. He's a big strong kid and uh, he's, uh, he's a tough kid to get out of there. I think uh, you get him the ball in there and he's going to do well. He's got springs uh, in those legs, I'll tell you. He gets up and he gets up high and he gets up quickly. Uh, he hits the second, and uh, Quincy's right back in this. They've cut the lead down to 11-9 as uh, Phil McGillicuddy inbounds to John O'Connor, kicks it off to Ketty. He missed O'Connor in the rebound action, following up. And O'Connor was fouled. They're going to call that one on Sean Munchback, it looks like. Uh, John O'Connell, nice job of following up there. Uh, and they did. They called that one on Munchback. He's going to have two. Again, Sean Munchback, a 10th grader, a sophomore, uh, learning the ropes, a good athlete, and uh, he'll make those uh, fouls sometimes, but a real aggressive player out there. O'Connell, nice job of sticking that first foul shot. We talked in the girls' game about uh, form. If you look at John O'Connell, he's got perfect form from the foul line. He's very balanced, great rotation on the ball. He sticks both foul shots. That's O'Connell's seventh point in the first half. North Quincy's up 12 to 9. Quincy working the ball around the perimeter. Uh, North Quincy has stayed in its man to man. A little jumper that comes up short, and here come the Red Raiders. Yoey gets the ball to McGillicuddy. Teddy Stevenson calling out a play. Here goes McGillicuddy penetrating against Centrella. He drops it off to O'Connell. John O'Connell having a big first half for the Red Raiders, Jack. Uh, O'Connell sticks it in. The Red Raiders are up 15-9 as John Francicini calls a timeout for the Presidents. Uh, watching John, he's, you know, a lot of his guys are, you know, Going over, maybe over covering on, on McGillicuddy. He made a nice pass, passed it off, and uh, you know, uh, had the easy shot. And I think uh, you know, that's what a great player like McGillicuddy will do. Everybody comes on him, he dishes the ball off, and uh, that's why he's such uh, rated as one of the uh, top players here in the South Shore. Yeah, Jack, I'll tell you, uh, we, as we look at the uh, President cheerleaders, Quincy has loaded up today as the hosts. They've got uh, the full cheerleading squad. They've got their band here. The stands are filled. It's a great turnout for the Presidents. Well, I, think, uh, I think the format helps, Jimmy. Uh, uh, there's obviously, uh, you know, Principal Cooper, uh, is, uh, we're involving, everybody's involved. You know, our band is back at games. That's something that maybe over the last couple of years we haven't had. 
uh, Gil Appoint, our new band director, wants to get involved. And it only makes for a great day like this, and I'm sure uh, at the end of the season will be the same down at North Quincy. Uh, just making the rivalry a little bit better. Yeah, well, here we go. We're back with some action off the timeout. Francicini trying to calm down the presidents, and uh, they're going to work here against the North Quincy defense. Out on the perimeter with a three-point bid, Mark Robertson. Robertson's having a little trouble getting started up here, but uh, he's a very athletic guy. We know his name from the football season, right, Jack? Mark's a great athlete. Uh, he's been a real leader on this team, especially with John with some young sophomores. Uh, uh, in his lineup, he certainly has been a leader for them, and uh, Mark is uh, doing all the right things to, you know, being a student athlete here at Quincy. Uh, he's just done a great job. Okay, Munch back at the line. You mentioned he's only a sophomore. It's a lot of pressure to put a young sophomore under the first North Quincy Quincy game for him. He's done a nice job of reacting so far. Six the first foul shot. I'll tell you, one of the things we're going to watch for over the course of the game, Jack, uh, Ted Stevenson showed up nicely dressed, suit coat, tie, etc. The suit coat's off. We'll watch the rest of that uh, outfit really come apart here. And, uh, both him and John are the t shirts fall by the end of this game. But, uh, uh, getting back to the young kids, I'm really amazed at some of the way the young kids play. You know, it's such a big game, like you say, but they're out there like it's just another game. And, and uh, these kids are getting a little bit more mature all the time. And uh, it amazes me the way some of them handle themselves out there on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Uh, McGillicuddy and Centrell are out top. McGillicuddy spins on him, looks for his jumper. And nice touch by Phil McGillicuddy. Breaks the scoring ice. It was great D by Centrella, nothing you can do about that type. He makes his shots, that's, that's the key. Quincy moving the ball around the perimeter, here's Centrella. They've got uh, a lot of movement along the baseline here. They've got um, another perimeter bid by Kevin O'Connell comes up short. Jack, they've got number uh, 14, Matt Ramponi running the baseline, trying to create a little motion in the North Quincy defense. Uh, the perimeter shots aren't falling for Quincy, but one thing we've seen with John Francicini, he'll stay with that. He lets his kids shoot the ball, and eventually when they heat up, get in the flow, uh, the Red Raiders could have some problems there. There's Phil McGillicuddy trying to create for himself. Comes up a little short. Back come the presidents. Ball's on the perimeter. Nice D out top. Chris Lockheed's in there, and there's a steal. Here comes uh, Keddy with a penetration. A great job underneath. Number 20 for the Presidents, Kevin O'Connell, only a sophomore, stepped in, took the charge. Mike Keddy looks like he might have hurt himself there. He went down hard, uh, but that was a gutsy play. The one that should have hurt himself was Kevin O'Connell. He took a, you know, he took a hard full, uh, full force charge, but that's the way he's playing this year. I'm sure he's been a great surprise to John uh, this year. He's averaging, I'm not sure, but, you know, close to 10, 15 points a game. But he's an outstanding athlete. He's got a nice job. All right. In for the uh, Red Raiders uh, comes a name that some of you will know from our fall coverage, Max Repoff, senior quarterback. He's in down low. It's another perimeter jumper that uh, getting a little frustrated out there is uh, Mark Robinson. He just can't get one to drop. He's got nice form. Uh, we know he'll heat up eventually, but right now is it 17-11. We're under eight minutes. Uh, Robinson still without his first points. They inbound to McGillicuddy and they clear for him. Uh, picking up the assignment on McGillicuddy is Craig Keenan. McGillicuddy with a nice move out top, great penetration, and he sticks a lap. I'll tell you, Jack, one thing Stevenson recognized about McGillicuddy, he's so quick and he gets up so quickly. Tremendous athlete. It's just tough for any one kid to cover him. Well, especially, too, I think, uh, you know, Phil McGillicuddy knows he's got some younger players out there playing against him. He's had a couple of years of experience, and uh, he's certainly taking advantage of that right now. Sleeth. Yeah, nice drop inside from Sleeth. He got it down low to uh, Repoff. Repoff couldn't finish, but on the rebound action, it looks like uh, Matt Yowie's going to go to the line. Tell you, uh, this is beyond, it's getting beyond back and forth, Jack. We're having problems keeping up with all the action. Coming in. What you get when you come here tonight. Yeah. 
you're going to get it for a full, uh, man, I don't want to, I think, a full 30 minutes, 20, well, how much of the half? You know, I'm a football guy, Jimmy, really. Yeah, well. Uh, 30 minutes of basketball. You know? All right. And we've got uh, big senior Matt Mooney coming in for the uh, Red Raiders. Uh, Matt's sister Megan, if I'm correct, is a Quincy High student, so I wonder how the Mooney household deals with rooting in this game. But nice, nice penetration by Joe Holleran. Off the dribble, sticks a little jumper, and North Quincy stretches its lead to 10, 21-11. Quincy working the ball around the perimeter, and uh, Adam Jurowitz trying to free up Robertson came out and he's going to get called for the block, the moving pick. He's going to make some decisions. He certainly can't lose Adam, uh, you know, this early in the game and uh, keep an eye on uh, you know, what the John is doing. He's a big guy in this game. Yeah, that's Jurowitz's second foul and uh, they need him in there. There's no question. Uh, as you talked about him before, very athletic, very physical. They need that component here down low. Uh, Sleeth missed the foul shot. Mooney trying to create something underneath, but cleared by Jurowitz, and back comes Quincy. In the corner, you got Craig Keenan, cross to Mark Robertson. They get it low to Jurowitz. He's looking to penetrate on Mooney. Nice help, nice job by Ripoff of helping out. They strip the ball. Back comes McGillicuddy. Little hesitation dribble. Penetration, he comes up empty. Some great defense down low. Teddy Stevenson looking to get a block call. Tell you, Jack, Ted is all fired up. I did my uh, pregame interview of both coaches and uh, these two normally affable and reasonably civil guys didn't have much to say. They're both fired up, Francis Cheney and Stevenson. I'll still throw it up, Jimmy. They're not the same people, and I'm sure they will be afterwards. Both great coaches, been around a long time, and uh, done great jobs for the city of Quincy. Yeah, big three-pointer stuck by Joe Holleran, and uh, John Francicini is a little frustrated right now, as uh, North Quincy's been able to quietly stretch itself out to a nice 13-point lead. Uh, as the Red Raider cheerleaders take the floor here in McLean Gymnasium, uh, John Francicini trying to, Francicini, I missed a uh, syllable there, trying to regroup the troops here. I think, uh, you know, again, he's playing out there sometimes with three sophomores. Uh, kids don't make a play, uh, but you know, you'll see sometimes the first that uh, you know, a little more experience will maybe take advantage of that. But again, these kids will turn around and, and turn around the other way. So just because the team is up by seven or eight right now, and this rivalry especially, uh, it'll turn around you know, as quick as it did the other way. So both teams playing well, and the enthusiasm certainly hasn't stopped at all since the opening faceoff. Well, one of the uh, concerns we had, uh, or Ted Stevenson had coming into the game, is that this Quincy president offense very potent. They can put the points up on the board. Thus far, their perimeter game hasn't worked, and that's why they've only got 11 points as, as we approach the uh, five-minute mark in the first half. But they showed against Plymouth South that they can score points. And once they start to heat up, uh, that's the concern Stevenson has. He's happy to see them sitting with a 13-point lead because he knows once these presidents start shooting, uh, they're going to put points on the board quickly. Robinson and Santella certainly can do it. It's just a matter when they get hot, like I said. The spirit will put them right back in the ball. All right, Centrella penetrates in the corner, gets it back out to Robinson. Robinson back to Centrella. There's a little jumper, no good. Jurowitz taps it back out to O'Connell. O'Connell with a nice drop down to uh, Sean Munchback, and Munchback gets mauled underneath. He's going to go to the line. So a nice job of moving the ball around the perimeter. A little more patience that time. They, you'll note they come out of the timeout from Francicini. Uh, a little more patient. They got a better look at the hoop that time. And I'm sure John told them, he's reminding them that, you know, guys, if the jumpers aren't falling, let's not take them. Let's look for something well, a little. The right pass is not a question. As everybody knows, you've got to make it from the free throw. 
That's what will uh, you know, be the big difference in the end. So let's see what Quincy can do to take advantage of it. Munchback sticks to second. Uh, he's got three here, and uh, he's going to take a little break. Uh, John Francicini gets John Lupo, a 5'9 senior guard in. Uh, Teddy Stevenson gets John O'Connell back in the game. Mooney gave him a nice break. There's a release to Phil McGillicuddy. And McGillicuddy smartly uh, pulled up a little short there on O'Connell. Now there you have a uh, experience play there. He caught O'Connell uh, full steam and just put on the brakes and O'Connell ran into McGillicuddy picking up a foul. After that play, I want to know why McGillicuddy's not playing wide receiver tomorrow. I know his dad and uh, I'm sure there's a reason but he'd be an awful good one. I'll tell you that. Yeah, he's very athletic but uh, he's very devoted to basketball. We know that much about him. Here's Hollering out on the perimeter. And this could be the start of something. Yep. Could, uh, get him going and that's a plus for Quincy. Robertson with his first three. Teddy Stevenson, you'll know, Jack, we talked about this. Teddy Stevenson immediately calls a timeout. Nice move by Stevenson. Uh, Robertson sticks the three. It's his first shot. He doesn't want to give them any chance to heat up, so he calls a timeout. And he's talking to Joe Holleran right away here uh, about what he wants to see as far as perimeter coverage. I think he's very aware of uh, you know, the people they have to stalk, and uh, you know, we'll, uh, I'm sure that's that's all the strategy going back and forth. And uh, I'm sure not doesn't want to see Mark Robinson get hot right now with three pointers. Yeah, we're at 24-15. We're just uh, just about at the five-minute mark. There you go, the president cheerleaders, um, and uh, Mark Quigley, Dave Centrella, and the troops are out here on the court there. I think they're starting to feel that this is their chance to make a run at the Red Raiders. Uh, Teddy Stevenson has his troops rounded up. He's telling them the lead's at nine right now. Um, he'd like to keep it there because, uh, as we said, the presidents can put points up in bunches. So he focuses his troops, and here's Joe Holler and inbounding to McGillicuddy. Quincy staying with a man to man, Centrella on McGillicuddy. McGillicuddy and O'Connell. Looks like it might be a two-man game. They drop it down low to O'Connell. He's looking to penetrate. He does. He drops it inside. Number 22, Greg McGinnis. I'll tell you, Jack, another thing we know that's going on here, knowing Teddy Stevenson, uh, Adam Jurowitz has two fouls. They're gonna, the reason John O'Connell's back in, they're going to give the ball to O'Connell, and they're going to get Jurowitz in foul trouble. Either that... Or they figure that O'Connell can just score, you know, go to work on him. Because uh, Adam's got a choice, either play D or play to not pick up that third foul. You know, and Adam, he plays one way. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see if he stays under control. Uh, you know, that's a big key right now. But another foul will probably take him out for the last five minutes. Centrella, nice crossover dribble on Sleeth, but Sleeth recovers. Here's a perimeter pass. Quincy again working the perimeter. This is going to be a problem. I don't think the ball was touched. It was not. So it's a backcourt violation. Uh, trying to get the ball back out to Robertson. Uh, John Lupo. Little turnover there. Phil McGillicuddy's getting a little break with 420 left in the half. Sleeth have yeah, Sleeth having a little problem inbounding the ball. They get it back out to McGinnis. McGinnis out to Holler and Holler and Nice rebound in traffic by McGinnis. There's Sleeth, and Sleeth drills the three-pointer. A nice job by Brandon Sleeth. I'll tell you, Brent. Dad, on that one, I'll tell you, a few years back, Bobby Sleeth, great athlete from uh, North Jersey High School. So I had to give him a plug. I saw him on the way in here. Yeah, well, I was trying to get him to take the seat you're in, but he wouldn't do it, so. Uh, you know, why bring yeah. the JV in for a varsity game? There you go. There you go. All right. Well, Brandon and Lauren, Lauren was doing that in the girls' game. I think that before they're fed their meals at night, the Sleeth's got to stick uh, 20 jumpers each or something. Uh, they both have done a nice job for their respective Red Raider teams. I'm sure Bobby still wins the follow shooting contest out in the backyard. But that may be about it right now for him. Yeah. I'll tell you, Dave Centrella, who's had a great first half, he's been very successful working on... Uh, Phil McGillicuddy, he's at the foul line now. He sticks his first. 
Sticks a second. Nice job by Dave Centrella. He's got five, and we're at 28 17 North Quincy. Holleran's going to bring it up against the pressure. It's been a straight, uh, both teams playing man to man the whole way. Sleeth in the corner. Here's Yoey back to Sleeth. Sleeth looking to penetrate. He does. Nice little jump. A great penetration move by Brandon Sleeth on Robertson. On the perimeter, Centrella looking for help. He gets it to Robertson. Robertson with the three point attempt. He sticks it. No pace for the good shot is the key. You know, you take the early shot, uh, it drives coaches wild. But uh, if you hit them, they're great. If you don't, they're not. So patience will prevail here, hopefully. The lead's at 10. We're under three minutes. Hollering with a penetration. Stepping in again was Mr. O'Connell, I believe. Yes, it was. Uh, it was a sophomore, Kevin O'Connell, but he got there too late in the eyes of the official. He's called for the block. Missed it by a half a step, but uh, not taking advantage of that. And, uh, again, once again, uh, got to make the, make the free throw. Uh, I'll tell you, big from the Quincy perspective, John Francicini's up. That's uh, the third foul on O'Connell. That's tough for, Nor for Quincy. So uh, Francicini has to take O'Connell out. That's going to hurt the uh, president offense. Hollerin sticks a second foul shot. Stevenson calls a timeout. So the lead's at 11. We're just under three minutes. It's 31-20. Um, nice job by Joe Hollerin at the foul line. Uh, and Jack, I think uh, Teddy Stevenson called the timeout there. And I think what he's doing here uh, is pointing out the fact that now Quincy's down to two big perimeter guys, Centrella and Robinson. Uh, O'Connell's had a great year as only a sophomore, uh, but they've got him out of the game now. Uh, we noted after the last time out that Stevenson directed the North offense into John O'Connell going right at Adam Jurowitz, who's got two. So I'm sure that he's going to talk defensively about focusing on Robinson and Centrella, and offensively, we'll see if they don't go after Jurowitz. Take advantage of what they give us, and uh, to lead by 10 at halftime in this rivalry is really a big lead. Yeah, and North Quincy, what they did, they did react to the fact that uh, O'Connell's out of the game, but they reacted by coming with a press. Great move by Ted Stevens that Quincy wasn't expecting it. Uh, they forced the turnover, but then John O'Connell turns it over, and back comes Robinson with a big jumper. And the lead's under 10. It's 31-22 North Quincy. Nice job by Robertson. Sleeth down low to O'Connell. They clear the area for O'Connell. He looks to penetrate on Jurowitz. O'Connell got some nice, uh, rather Jurowitz got nice baseline help by Robertson. Here comes Holler and penetrating. Robertson's everywhere on the court. There's O'Connell. Little jumper out top. No good in traffic. Yoey. And Yoey gets tied up by Centrella. I'll tell you, we have some tremendous athletes out on the court, Jack. I mean, I just watched Robertson all over the place. Centrella came in on the rebound action. He's about 5'10 uh, against John O'Connell. They're just reacting beautifully out there. There's Brandon Sleeth with a little jumper. Sleeth remains hot for North Quincy. That's a big factor in the first half, and it's 33-22 North Quincy. Right back, Quincy with a missed jump, but Jurowitz in the lane. And here comes uh, Joe Holler and Teddy Stevenson telling them to spread the offense. I think he's looking to uh, slow things down, take a little time off the clock. Max Repoff looking to penetrate, and uh, we've got a reaching call on Matt Ramponi. I'm not a sophomore, uh, you know, a real aggressive type of athlete. Uh, but again, a sophomore, but uh, doing a great job for Quincy. And uh, you know, these sophomores play like seniors a lot of times on both sides of, both sides of the ball. We talk about athletes to me. Uh, uh, Matt Huey, if I'm not mistaken, is a golfer. One of the best golfers, I think, in the area. And, uh, you know, it just shows you the type of talent and skills 
that uh, the kids from both high schools possess, and uh, they do great things. Uh, Repoff goes one for two from the foul line. The North Quincy leads at 12, and back comes Robertson. Robertson, a little hesitation dribble off to Centrella. Centrella with a penetration. He's lying on his back and gets his own rebound, but uh, Yoey with the steal, dumps it off to Holler, and nice, clean finish by Joe Holler, a great move. And the North Quincy leads at 14, 36-22. North came right back with a pressure jack, but uh, Max Repoff could call for the reach. That was a big possession there, going from 10 to 14 points. Uh, hopefully Quincy can regroup here, make these two foul shots, and uh, try to stay within the range of about, uh, I think, eight to, eight to 10 points. I think John would feel a lot better right now than to try to press and have a North able to pick up you know, four six extra points. Now Centrella at the foul line here. He's been to the foul line a lot. This is his uh, seventh and eighth attempts here in the first half, and he sticks two here. Nice job by Dave Centrella, who's got to be tired. Remember, he's the one who was out on McGillicuddy. McGillicuddy has stayed out uh, the balance of the first half. I may have missed it. He may have picked up a third foul, or he may have two. But uh, Joe Holleran's done a great job reacting to the absence of McGillicuddy. Little perimeter jumper by O'Connell comes up short. Here comes Jurowitz as Quincy comes right back. Nice move by Robertson down the lane. They look in and he can't finish. Ball's on the floor. There we go. That's what Raymer said we'd see. Body's flying. It's not a rugby game, folks. It's a basketball <laughs> game. It's Quincy, not Quincy. That's what you're going to get. And uh, Quincy gets the possession. So. Coming up off the bottom of the pile was Dave Centrella. John Francicini is a little upset, and frankly, rightfully so, because uh, he had a guy on the floor and he had bodies diving onto him. I don't know if they're piling on here in basketball, but someone was guilty of that. Quincy on the perimeter. Little penetration move by number 15, John Lupo, but he stepped on the baseline. Yep. That's a tough play. That's a potential three-point play right there. Yeah, nice defense. So I know one thing about Ted Stevenson, he teaches his players to just put one foot on the baseline. Keeps it easy. They shut the baseline down there, and Lupo had no option but to go out of bounds. Here's Hollerin bringing it up against the pressure. 30-second clock is off. Norse going to take the air out of the ball, slow it down. They're under 20 now. They're going to look for the last shot. They're moving the ball around the perimeter here. Hollering out top, we're under 10 now. Now they'll look to shoot. Yoey gets it to McGillicuddy. Back to Yoey, nice penetration. Jurowitz picks up a big foul there. A great job by North Quincy. If you look at the clock, there's no time left. They took all the time off. McGillicuddy was brought in by Ted, a nice substitution at the end. Uh, Phil, they looked to get the ball to him for the last shot, but he dropped it down to Yoey. And unfortunately for Quincy, on the penetration, uh, Jurowitz got called for the grab. Unfortunately, it was a big penalty. I'm sure John didn't want that. Um, you know, Quincy playing the defense down to make the tough shot. McGill got it again. They, they doubled him, passed the ball off. He got the shot, and it was a foul. That's a tough foul, I think, that could come back to Ron Quincy. You know, the second half with uh, Adam having that third foul. But, yeah. Uh, you know, as we go, uh, these kids regroup and. You always hit the line for two. This is one of the toughest things in basketball. You're in a completely filled gymnasium, and you're at the. We've even got the custodian here sweeping the floor as he shoots. But uh. Six men on the field. Yeah. Right always sticks a second. He's one for two from the foul line. And I'll tell you, from the Red Raider perspective, they've got to be happy. They're up 13, 37-24. John Francicini's got to regroup the troops, Jack. Uh, you'll see a different half, about 13 points is tough. Which is going to work that out for it, but I think we'll have just a greater second half coming back. Okay, and we'll be back for second half coverage. We want to welcome you back for second half action. Um, it's going to be North Quincy ball on possession arrow. 
37-24, Red Raiders with the lead. Just a brief rundown on the first half stats. Uh, unofficially, we have Dave Centrella with seven, Adam Jurowitz with five. We've got uh, sophomore Sean Munchback with three, and Mark Robertson with eight for the presidents. As Adam Wu inbounds the ball for North Quincy, Phil McGillicuddy had four, Adam Wu two, Brandon Sleeth five, Joe Holleran with a big half, he had 12, Max Repoff had one, John O'Connell with nine, and Matt Yoey with one for the Red Raiders. Uh, Wu is back in for North Quincy. Nice dribble penetration there. Great job by Adam Wujak, who's very athletic. We didn't talk about him much at all in the first half. He was out early. Well, he's a, he's a veteran, obviously, uh, and uh, he's going to be a key guy. And I know that Teddy sat down with Bill Cuddy a little bit at the end of that half, but because he knows he needs him for the, uh, you know, for the end of this game. Uh, even being up by 10, the history of this rivalry uh, is going to come down to the wire. And uh, but, uh, Adam, again, is another veteran. And, uh, you know, we'll see who prevails. The veterans are the young kids here. Wu calmly sinks his first. And uh, the second one goes in and out. Nice job by McGillicuddy of getting around the box out of uh, Adam Vecchioni. And uh, Phil forced the turnover. It's going to be North Quincy ball on the inbounds. So just like in the first half, Jack, North Quincy's coming out quickly in the second. A great dribble penetration by Brandon Sleet. And Brandon gets his first two of the second half. North Quincy stretches lead out to 16. Quincy's got to come on strong here defensively and make some moves because they can't let this game get the, uh, any further uh, than it is right now. Uh, so Matt Ramponi was kind of a little wild shot there, but these are the kind of baskets right here. Quincy can't afford to give up. Yeah, nice job by Joe Holler and a great look, great look by Adam Wu. He got the outlet to Holler and who finished cleanly, and John Francicini with a quick timeout. Uh, we played less than a uh, minute here in the second half. We're coming up at 15.05, and North Quincy stretches it out to 18, 42-24. I think both coaches, especially John, let's want the guys to relax, try to take a good time, maybe off the clock, especially playing with the younger kids. Uh, you make a, an errant shot, and North goes back with a fast break like that. That could be a killer, but uh, plenty of time left, Jimmy, and uh, these Quincy kids have battled all year, so they'll be back. I'll tell you, during the timeout, I noted Mike Dracchio in the huddle. His freshman squad's having quite a year, aren't they, Jack? Okay, Mike does a great job. Uh, over the last couple of years, the freshmen have really, uh, you know, well, number one, they've won a lot of ball games, but I think they're getting such a great uh, uh, experience, uh, you know, in the, in the, uh, at the freshman level. And uh, success at the young age only uh, makes them better as they come up to John. So. Mike certainly does a great job, as do all the coaches here, Jimmy. And there we go again with North on the, oh. the fast break. Beautiful pass by McGillicuddy and a great finish by O'Connell off the alley-oop. Uh, great look by McGillicuddy, and North Quincy has got its lead up to 20, 44-24. Rebound and traffic by Holleran, and back come the Raiders again. Hollering with a look back out to Wu. Wu looking to penetrate against a double team. Centrella, great hustle while on the floor. I think this one could be a, uh, nope, they call the jump ball. I'll tell you, number 50, Adam Vecchioni, was on the floor and uh, he was basically uh, jumped on by Brandon Sleeth, but they called it a jump ball. And uh, here comes Centrella. Great hustle by Centrella. Did you see him scrapping while flat on the floor there, Jack? He spends as much time on the floor sometimes he does, you know, up and about, but he's a leader and uh, he's certainly having a great senior year. Here's an air ball from the corner, but Centrella hustling. He knocks the ball off Phil McGillicuddy's leg. Uh, I'll tell you, this kid Centrella's got no, no quitting him at all. He's all energy out there. He's going 100% all yeah. the time. We remember him from last year. You gotta follow them out to get him out of the game, but he's, he's having a great year. McGillicuddy covering Centrella. Quincy moves the ball around the perimeter. They're forced to shoot it, and number 14, Matt Ramponi, in response to his coach's exhortations as the 30-second clock went out, fired up a three. That comes from a, 
a great basketball family, and uh, Quincy, his grandfather, was a great player, and uh, uh, he's just uh, not bad. Comes right back with a, with a fast break, but Nancy, he's only a sophomore. He's got a great career ahead of him. Here's another three. I missed who took that. Uh, uh, well, this is the game that Quincy wants to be playing. Here's a steal. Here comes Centrella on Hollering. Nice penetration. He can't finish. It's around the rim and out. But in there with a the big rebound in traffic, Vecchioni, and he's going to go to the line. We'll look for uh, Teddy Stevenson now to be trying to slow things down a little, and he does. He takes a timeout as the lead's at 16. Uh, Ted is gonna really nurse this lead, Jack. He's not gonna let any time pass uh, and, and let Quincy get any momentum here if he can help it. Well, I think it's a good timeout by Ted. He's just uh, you know, the guys down. Uh, Quincy going on a little bit around the land aggressively. Adam, uh, Adam Vecchioni, not a big kid, but playing tough on the boards. And, uh, Like Teddy's calm everybody down now. Uh, John probably didn't want the timeout at this time. He had a little bit of momentum, but back and forth, that's when it goes. Good coaches, good players, makes a great game. I'll tell you, Jack, you might be able to help us out with this one. I was observing during the girls' game that the rim to our left is a nice tight rim, and the rim to our right looks like it's missing a bolt or two. And you'll note that the presidents are always going to the rim to our right in the second half. I think they've created a nice little home court advantage there. Let's watch what happens as uh, Adam Vecchioni goes to the line. <laughs> well, I think I'm on to something myself. Although Vecchioni doesn't touch anything but net there with his first foul shot. As you know, Jim, I'll plead the fifth on that last question. All right, I understand that one. I can dunk it on this end, but not the other, so that may tell you something. <laughs> Well, Vecchioni didn't help out. It was nothing but net on both foul shots there. And uh, the lead's at 14. Quincy coming with a nice little 3-2 trap. Get the ball to Wu. Wu down low to Sleeth, and Sleeth finishes nicely. I'll tell you, Brandon Sleeth's having a great game for himself today. Well, he's that senior that is stepping up in the big rivalry game and obviously is just having, a, you know, having a, maybe one of his best games. Uh, but uh, that's what you look for in a rivalry a game like this. Robertson with a long jumper. Nothing. O'Connell looks up to Sleeth. And Sleeth, nice release by Brandon Sleeth and a great look by John O'Connell. It's 50-32. The lead's back to 18. Here comes Robertson. He gets the ball. Here comes Jurowitz on the penetration. Oh, I'll tell you, they got the ball outside to Ramponi. He dropped it into Jurowitz. He is an athlete, number 44. Nice shot right here, and that makes the play a big three, and uh, coming back within 15, uh, that's, you know, that's something that they have to do. They can't miss the shot. Uh, Teddy Stevenson is getting John O'Connell out for a little breather. He brings in Greg McGinnis. Jurowitz sticks the foul shot. That was that forgiving rim there I was talking about. There you go. North does a nice job breaking the press. Adam Wu with a penetration, can't finish. Jurowitz to Robinson, up to Centrella. Quincy right back. Centrella penetrates on McGillicuddy. Nice baseline move by Centrella to beat McGillicuddy. Here come the Red Raiders. Sleeth was open there as uh, they got the ball into McGinnis in the middle, but McGinnis was tripped by number 50, Vecchioni. Probably not a bad foul, frankly. Although I'm sure he didn't intentionally trip him. Again, everybody diving for the ball. The balls are flying, the bodies are flying. And even though it's a 14 point game, these guys are playing it like it's a high school. Nice, nice pass to Wu off the inbound play. Wu can't finish again. Back comes Quincy. They get the ball to Centrella. A little baseline jumper in and out. On the rebound action, we're going to have a foul on Quincy's Adam Vecchioni, I believe. Yep. It's Vecchioni. Picking up the foul, and here comes North against the press. O'Connell gets it outside to McGillicuddy. 
McGillicuddy down the wing, looking to get it to Sleeth. We're going to have a 30 second reset as the ball was kicked by Adam Vecchioni. North Quincy with an inbound from the side. O'Connell gets it in the corner to Sleeth. Sleeth, nice dribble penetration. Gets it out to Holleran. And Holleran is going to get called for the baby steps out top. I'll tell you, Jack, the lead is at 13. It's interesting. This is a big possession where at 11.30, the second half, Quincy with a chance to get it down to 10. Ramponi. You can't miss any shots, Jimmy. They, they've got to make their shots, pass the ball around like that. And... Well, Centrella couldn't finish off the great dribble penetration, but Adam Vecchioni did. Nice rebound and finish in traffic for Vecchioni. Centrella creating the opportunity there. Here comes Phil McGillicuddy right back. Nice look away move by McGillicuddy. He did a good job of looking off the defense there and uh, penetrating. He's going to go to the line for two. Following Adam, I think that's a fourth foul. But, uh, John left to make a decision what he's going to do. He's going to win the big guy. Yeah, that's a. That's big. That's big for uh, John Francicini. This is going to hurt them. Because this kid, Jurowitz, he's done a great job inside. And uh, they need his athleticism in there. Quincy just lacks the depth that the Red Raiders have. Well, I think the depth on the big guy. Uh, now it's got a couple of big guys they can rotate in there. Adam Vecchioni now is going to have to come in and you know, play tough underneath. He's undersized. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. You know O'Connell's going to be that fight. So, yeah, Teddy Stevenson responded to the fact that... Uh, Jurowitz is out by giving John O'Connell a rest. He's pulled uh, O'Connell, brought in big Matt Mooney, and Mooney's going to take up space under there. Does a nice job defensively against Vecchioni, shutting off the baseline, and Vecchioni took some baby steps there for the travel. And he had no place to go. He was looking at the face in the wall at that time, but uh, we'll see how they react. Quincy stays with the pressure, but North Quincy again handles it well. Here's Holler and setting the offense out top, covered by Centrella. Quincy's coming with a diamond and one full court press and dropping back into man to man. They're doing a great job. Actually, no, they're back in a 1 3 1 here. McGillicuddy trying to create a jumper there, comes up short. O'Connell rebounds in traffic. O'Connell penetrates along the wing, skip pass over to Centrella. Centrella, a little penetration on the baseline, sticks the jumper. I'll tell you, I think Dave Centrella is going to just take this Quincy president team on his back and carry him the second half. Well, he's, he's been doing it most of the year. Uh, unfortunately, one guy can't do it, Jimmy, but he's certainly trying. And, you know, they've got to pull it together. They're within 10 now, so a little run here can put him right back in the game. Keddy gets it back to Holler, and Holler and launching a three. No good. Rebound Moody in traffic. No. Keddy. Keddy with a big rebound put back. Nice job by Mike Keddy. Matt Mooney keeping the ball alive underneath. The Red Raiders are holding tough at 12. It's 53 41. We're under 10 minutes here. Little jumper by Robertson. Off the rim. Here comes Joe Hollerin. He doesn't get picked up, so he takes a jumper. Mooney trying to keep it alive. But here comes Centrella. Nice penetration and finish by Dave Centrella. Quincy hanging tough. It's 53-43. The lead's at 10. McGillicuddy gets wiped out by Centrella. Going to be a call here. Dave's a little upset with his teammates. He wants to know uh, where they are on the press here. It's going to be a side out for North Quincy, right in front of us here. Jimmy, he's got to be careful. There's still plenty of time. He's certainly going to need him again. It's another problem for Quincy when you're playing behind. That's their 15 foul as well. So, nice strip by Mark Robinson. He strips Allerin, and there it is. The big hoop brings the lead under 10. It's 53-45. North Quincy. And Teddy Stevenson calls a timeout. 
You're always more comfortable at single digits when you're trying to fight back. And uh, we've got about nine minutes left in the game. It's uh, a 53-45 lead as we look at the president cheerleaders. Uh, but the John Francicini squad has done a great job of hanging around. They've not only been down all game, but they've had foul troubles. They've never had all five of their guys in there at once here. Um, it, it's really been a great, great fight by the Quincy Presidents thus far. Hanging tough. In lots of the games, that's the way it's been all year. And in talking to people from North, kind of the same type of thing. So we got two very similar teams. Uh, and I think we're seeing exactly the type of battle we, we thought we'd see. And nobody's disappointed, but a big turnover again by Quincy. Yeah, on the timeout, uh, Teddy Stevens has got John O'Connell back in there. It's a penetration by Vecchioni. He hits it. That's a big hoop for Quincy. The lead's at six, 53-47. North's got to keep its composure here. Holleran pulls it out. Got Holleran, McGillicuddy, Sleeth, O'Connell, and Ketty out there. McGillicuddy looking to penetrate. Keeps the dribble alive. He drops it to Ketty, over to Holleran. We're at five seconds on the 30-second clock as Holleran penetrates. He misses the jumper. Here comes Centrella. He's looking to penetrate. He can't finish. And we've got a call underneath. Number 50, Adam Vecchioni. I'll tell you, that, that, that's an interesting call, Jack. Um, there was a little bit of banging that went on. I don't know if Adam was the one who should have got hit there. It might have been a call earlier, but it's good. Yeah, yeah. It's not worth arguing with them. But they do a good job, I guess. You know, yeah. From what they can do. I mean, they, Particularly they in a game like this. Especially in a rivalry like this. Yeah. That's up to the John O'Connell got stripped by Vecchioni as he looked to penetrate. And uh, it's a little bang in there when the ball was on the floor. I think O'Connell's frustrated, too. But... Uh, the air is coming out of the Red Raiders balloon, and the presidents are fired up right now. Well, it's a momentum swing, uh, surely to the presidents, so we'll see how they, if they can take advantage of it here. Six points down. North Quincy in a uh, trapping zone. O'Connell with the steal is getting called for the travel. I'll tell you, you got people in this gym right now, Jack, who are screaming at the top of their lungs. There's a lot of excitement and electricity in this gym. That's the way it always was. It always has been. So uh, this is just your typical Quincy North rivalry. And, and you got parents, and grandparents, alumni, everybody here, and it's just a great thing. Ball's in the corner with Centrella. Back out to O'Connell. Nice crossover dribble. Back to Centrella to O'Connell. O'Connell launching the three. It's in and out, and in the rebound action, they've got a call here. They've got a call on John O'Connell. Uh, Adam Vecchioni went down in the rebound action. They called O'Connell for an elbow. O'Connell and Vecchioni are really going at it out there, I'll tell you. And that time, John O'Connell got caught. Well, you certainly getting the, you know, the, the benefit of the calls here. Uh, they've still got to make the basket. And there's Adam Jurowitz. Adam Jurowitz came in on the timeout, and on the inbound, he stuck a little layup. It's 53-49, North Quincy. Matt Yoey brings it over, drops it to O'Connell to Slee. Slee, the little jumper, it's in and out. O'Connell in traffic. He hits the follow-up off the rebound, and this could be a big call. Let's see if it's on Jurowitz. It is. It's number 44 who picks up the foul. That's too bad for Quincy. Jurowitz came in, Jack, 
first thing he does is hits a big layup to cut it to four, but he got called on that one. It's number five on Adam Jurowitz. Yeah, we got John O'Connell going to the line. Tough, tough break. That's a big momentum switch right there. Now you'll see that the official is talking to John O'Connell a bit. John's been really excited out there and really fired up, and I think the official's telling him that he's got to calm down a little bit. Uh, well, John's he's talking to ten people. They're all upset. yeah. <laughs> O'Connell sticks the foul shot. A big three-point play. Now that's a a great play by John O'Connell. A real tough momentum breaker for Quincy and a big momentum switch for North. And uh, Robertson and Centrella fail to connect. Turnover to North Quincy. McGillicuddy bringing it up against the pressure. Centrella looking to set a trap. Yoey back to McGillicuddy. They gotta get it over and they do right at the 10 second mark. There's Sleep to Yoey. Yoey, nice job handling the pressure. Gets it out to McGillicuddy. Back to Sleeth in the corner. Sleeth launches the three. I'll tell you, a big turn of events here is North Quincy. He's having a game, uh, probably the game, best game of all year. And that's six straight points for North Quincy, and the lead is back to 10. Adam Vecchioni misses the little jumper, and Adam Wu with the rebound. Sleeth sets up another three, launched. He missed. Wu with the rebound. The penetration, back out to O'Connell. He misses. There's some banging down low, and out comes Adam Vecchioni. What a ball game, Jack. Here comes O'Connell for Quincy. Nice crossover by O'Connell, but he can't finish, and back comes Wu. Now Wu, the senior, smartly pulls it back. Getting the pace back. Not with the momentum right now. Norse got the lead at 10 after scoring six straight. They're going to slow the ball down a little, work the 30-second clock. Nice decision. O'Connell drops it in the corner to Sleeth. Sleeth, little fake, misses the jumper. Rebound by Yoey. Yoey can't finish. Rebound by Wu. Wu gets stripped by Vecchioni, and here comes Centrella against McGillicuddy. And the call is going to go against McGillicuddy, stepping in. McGillicuddy... Back on the other end again, start the break for Quincy. The young guys are doing okay so far. Yeah, I'll tell you, we're under five minutes. Norris got the lead back up to 10. Teddy Stevenson looking to get Joe Holleran back in the game. Trying to get some of his veteran leaders in there. North Quincy wants to slow it down a little bit, work the clock. Uh, Phil McGillicuddy picked up his fourth there, so Teddy's taking him out. Holleran's in. Centrella sticks to. Centrella having a great game here. He's been very effective from the foul line. Here comes North Quincy. Adam Wu. Adam looked inside to O'Connell. O'Connell zigged and Wu thought he was going to zag. Uh, North Quincy dropping back. It looks like they're going to go with a 1-3-1 here. Little zone pressure to try to pressure the perimeter. Quincy's perimeter game. Holleran on Centrella in the corner. Back out to Robertson. Sleeth is all over him. Yoey outside on Ramponi. Robertson trying to penetrate. He clears, takes the jumper. It's no good. And in the rebound action, it goes out of bounds off Quincy. It's going to be North ball. Uh, Teddy Stevenson's got this North Quincy defense stretched around the perimeter because Adam Jurowitz is out, Jack. Ted knows it. Well, I think Teddy's taking advantage of that and uh, doing all the right things at this moment. Uh, you know, it's still an eight-point game, but uh, so far Teddy's uh, pulling all the right uh, strings right now. Right, yeah, it's tough for Quincy. They're working that perimeter. They're trying to get something going again. Quincy will get another run here. We're at the four-minute mark. They're down eight. We know they'll be back, but there's another pass from Wu that uh, almost went astray. But Joe Holleran retrieves it. North moving the ball. We're at five seconds on the 30-second clock. Good look inside to O'Connell. Got to shoot the ball. O'Connell gets stripped again. 
We're going to see what the call is. We had a whistle before the 30-second clock went off, and I'm not sure if there's a problem where there was a call before the 30-second clock or not. Looks like that's what's going to happen here. Dave Centrellis. Sure, yeah. He's not very happy about this one. Yeah, what happened was the ball was loose as the 30-second clock was going off, and it looks like they're going to hit uh, Dave Centrella with a grabbing call. North to inbounds. They've got a new 30. They get it into O'Connell. And John O'Connell's getting called for the foul. O'Connell had his elbow up. on. O uh, it was O'Connell on O'Connell there. Uh, sophomore times, Kevin O'Connell. Many times the foul goes one way, it's questionable. The next minute, you know, it goes the other way. So maybe things even out. We don't know what it was, but uh, the referees doing, I'm sure, the best job they can do. It's, there's a lot of fierce competitiveness out there, and uh, I certainly wouldn't want to be in a striped shirt uh, tonight. Dude. I'll tell you something about Dave Centrella. He just walked over and he said something to John O'Connell. Now, if anyone's been fired up out on the court, it's been Centrella, but I think he told John to. Relax and enjoy this game. Uh, some tremendous sportsmanship by Centrella. What leadership. Yoey clears the rebound to Holleran. Holleran, they get the ball in the corner. Holleran gets it back. A nice move by Joe Holleran, but he can't finish. There's McGillicuddy. He can't finish. O'Connell looking to tap. He can't. And the ball is out of bounds off North Quincy. Gee, they had four bids there, Jack, and couldn't finish. There's a height, there's a height advantage, not to use them, but unfortunately not able to take advantage of it on that last shot. Quincy just not able to get that, uh, you know, that rebound they need. But, uh, they're yeah, hard. Teddy Stevens has got Mike Ketty in and Adam Woolwin inside. He's giving John O'Connell a little break. On the penetration, it looks like they're going to get Ketty. Uh, I'll tell you, John Francicini did a nice job of reacting to Teddy Stevenson. Uh, we talked earlier, Ted extended his defense around the perimeter, while the last two times down, North, uh, rather, Quincy's looked inside, and uh, this time it results in Vecchione going to the line for two. Well, you know, the two veteran coaches that have, uh, that have battled hard over the years, and they've both done a great thing for basketball, both schools, and also they've helped many kids over uh, their careers here. And, uh, it's just a great rivalry, not so much on the floor, but also on the sideline. Vecchione, Conley sticks them both, and the lead's at 59-52, uh, leads at seven. Yoey to Wu. North Quincy, nice job of handling this pressure. They get the ball to Joe Holleran, and they get it back out top to Adam Wu, who sets the offense. Wu gets it to McGillicuddy. McGillicuddy looks for the pick from Holleran. Penetrates the baseline. Looks to kick it out to Ketty. But it looks like uh, Phil McGillicuddy, uh, he stepped on the baseline. Uh, the lead's at 6, 59-53. As we come up, under 250. Robinson around the perimeter to Centrella in the corner. He hit the ball to Vecchione. Foul line, O'Connell, he penetrates. And he drops it. A nice job by Kevin O'Connell. Okay. Leads it four. Here's Joe Holleran back to Yoey. Yoey sent a great job in the middle against the pressure. Quincy staying with the trap. Stripped by Centrella. And there's a foul by McGillicuddy. Phil's a little upset that he got stripped. But I think he did the right thing, uh, slowing down Centrella. He would have had a layup. Yeah, uh, big problem there for uh, North Quincy. Phil McGillicuddy fouled out with that. That was his fifth foul. Teddy Stevens is going to come back with John O'Connell. I think he feels that with Wu. Yoey and Holleran in there, they can handle the pressure okay. He wants to bring back his big man, and we'll look for North next time down. He's bringing back Brandon Sleeth for Adam Wu. We'll look for North to bang it inside to O'Connell. Uh, these are two big foul shots by Dave Centrella. 
Centrell has been to the foul line 10 times thus far. This is his 11th and 12th attempts, and he is now 8 for 11. Very impressive foul shooting. He sticks them both. 9 for 12, and we're at two points here. Two-point lead for North Quincy as Yohe looks to handle the pressure. Hollering. They get the ball over half court to Sleeth. Nice job. They got the ball over right at the 10-second count. Uh, Sleeth, the ball went out off of Mark uh, Robertson's foot, although he doesn't think so. And it's going to be uh, North Quincy ball on the side out. Ketty puts it in. Penetration by Sleeth. And he got the call on the floor. Johnson. Fouls on number uh, 14. Matt Rampoli. Matt Rampoli. His third. And going to the line for two big foul shots. Brandon Sleeth. He calmly six the first. I'll tell you, Jack, you talked about guys stepping up for big games in this Quincy North rivalry, and Brandon Slee's certainly been one for North. He's had a great second half, and he calmly sticks two big foul shots under intense pressure, and what we're seeing, Teddy Stevenson's coming back with Adam Wu. I think we'll see Sleeth on the offensive end, Wu on the defensive end. Uh, Wu covering Robertson, very athletic. North extends the pressure. Centrella looks to the three. Robertson launches. He's long with it, and the rebound goes to Holleran. That's a key shot to Quincy. See if they recover defensively. Wu cross court to Holleran. North's going to slow it down. They're up four. We're at a minute 30. Robertson pressuring Sleep. Uh, pressuring Holleran, rather. None of the fans like that call, but I'll tell you, it's tough to pull one of those reach-around plays. Uh, Robertson stepped up and tried, but uh, Holleran's a quick athlete, and they know how to protect the ball, and uh, you can't fault Robertson for trying. Well, they're going to call it close down the end, and uh, got to jam a little bit when you're down by five points. Yeah, that's uh, a significant point here. Robertson, that's his first foul, Jack. Um, that's going to be big because Quincy is going to have to foul. they got a lot of players in foul trouble. But Mark Robertson, a big guard, he's only got one. So he'll be able to continue to pressure the ball for Quincy if they need to. Robertson swings the launch by Rampone. In and out. In traffic. Vecchioni with a nice rebound. And it looks like uh, John O'Connor. Nope, that's Ketty. Picks up the foul. Teddy Stevenson's going to come back with Brandon Sleeth as uh, looks like Sleeth will come in for Wu. No, he's taking out Ketty. Pony's taking that last shot for Quincy. John has a lot of confidence in his sophomores. You know, uh, you know he lets him shoot down here, and uh, uh, Quincy got the rebound, and uh, we'll see if Adam can take advantage. Six the first. That's a big foul shot. You know, you're uh, mentioning sophomores. That's one thing about this rivalry. We see it in some of the other sports, too. Um, they've got young players out on the uh, court tonight for Quincy. In a couple of years, this experience is going to be big. He sticks two. Great job by the sophomore. Uh, there's a quick foul on the inbound. We're at a minute 20. North Quincy's up four. John O'Connell's going to go to the line. Mark Robinson is going to use his fouls up now with a minute to go. Uh, I think Centrella has four, so he has to be careful. But yeah, Ramponi just yeah. picked up his fourth as well. Ramponi, but look at Robinson and the other guys did. Big foul shots for O'Connell. It's a little short on the first. Teddy Stevenson telling Adam Wu to slide up a little bit defensively. He was back in the backcourt. Teddy wants him up to slow down the ball as Quincy brings it up. He wants to try to have them take a little time off the clock. O'Connell sticks a second. 
The North Quincy leads at five, 64-59. We're at a minute 15. Yep. Robertson with the launch. Oh, off the back rim and out, and Wu with a big rebound. Uh, that looked good from here. We had the angle on that, Jack. It was a nice shot by Robertson. It just didn't drop. Yoey handles the pressure very well. Gets it a hollering. And there's Robertson picking up the foul. So we're under a minute. We're at five. Holleran's going to go to the line. As you said before, you know, you make the opportunities, and we certainly have to. Uh... Yeah, if you look over at Coach Francicini, uh, John's got his arm around Robertson. Robertson was upset that he missed that three-pointer. Uh, it was a launch. It, was, it looked like it was an NBA three, and it looked good from here. But uh, John's telling him he's got to keep his head in the game. Mark Robertson's going to be big in these final few minutes. Holleran misses the first foul shot. You know, Ted Stevens had talked before about a problem with foul shooting with this team. Foul shots are going to be big. Holleran misses them both. But there's O'Connell, a great play by Mike Ketty. Mike Ketty kept it alive, and John O'Connell sticks a big layup to put the lead at seven. It's 66 59 North. Centrella with a big launch. Dave Centrella with a big three pointer. Quite a launch by uh, Dave Centrella. And this is one of the things you see. Athletes like Centrella, they step up in the final minute. Uh, he's not afraid. I mean, Mark Robinson, too. He missed his three, but not afraid to take the shot. And I'm sure they'll keep launching. The lead's at four. That's not much, especially the way Quincy can put up their points. And, uh, I don't think there's a player on the floor, Jim, right now that doesn't want to take that shot. Now, these kids are confident on both sides of the ball, and uh, it's just the opportunity and uh, whatever rises. We've got four-point lead, and off Quincy with four, 40 seconds to go, so Quincy needs to turn over here or cook foul. Yeah, Norris got Yoey putting the ball in. They've got O'Connell, Sleeth, Holleran, and Wu. Yoey runs the baseline, gets it to Holleran. Holleran's going to bring it up against the pressure. On the trap, he gets it to Yoey. Oh, it's a turnover there. Yoey was a little tentative. Uh, he didn't have anyone to pass the ball to. Uh, Teddy Stevenson telling uh, Joe Holleran that he, uh, he wanted to see him in the middle. Uh, Yoey released the ball. Uh, the only one there was Adam Vecchioni, and when Yoey went to get it, he ran Vecchioni over. So. We're at 30 seconds, we're at four points, and Adam Vecchioni's going to shoot two. Well, Quincy got the turnover they're looking for. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. <laughs> Vecchioni calmly sticks the first. We've got all 10 players right up around the foul line. Big foul shot here, and he sticks them both. It's a two-point game, 30 seconds. The shot clock is still on. I don't think it need be. Hollering against the pressure. There's a turnover, and Quincy's going to get the ball. Down two with 25 seconds left. I'll tell you, Jack, what an ending. They can go for the game, but they're going right in for it. O'Connell with the layup, and the ball game is tied. Matt Yowie inbounds to John O'Connell, and they say he traveled. An unbelievable turn of events here as the Quincy presidents are going to have the ball with 15 seconds left and the opportunity to win the ball game. Teddy Stevenson looked like he was calling a timeout. Now John Frank calls a timeout. I think it's a good timeout, Jim. He wants to control the kids. He's got some young kids out there. Calm them down. 15 seconds go for that one start. Not be too uh, quick with it. And uh, I think a strategic timeout by John Frank. Well, you talk about momentum. 
Stevenson was calling a timeout, but when he saw the turnover and he knew the personnel he had on the court, he decided not to. He wanted to see if Quincy would inbound without having set up for the final 15, uh, hoping that there'd be confusion. But John Frisicini got the timeout. They're able to set a play here. Uh, Coach Papil is checking with the official to make sure they have timeouts left. It's going to be a side out of bounds right in front of us, and Quincy's got a chance to go for the win. Teddy Stevenson comes out with Wu, Holleran, O'Connell, Keddy, and Yoey. He's got seniors out there who have been in this situation before. Pressure ball game. John francicini has got Robertson, O'Connell, Vecchioni, Centrella, and Ramponi. And here we go with 15 seconds left. Quincy to inbound. Wu is going to pressure the inbounds pass. Centrella has it. Looks like Quincy's going to run the clock down. Centrella in the corner. He gets it right back over to Robertson. We're at five seconds. They get it to Rampoti. And Rampoti travels with the ball. Three seconds left. North Quincy will have an opportunity to go for the win here. Teddy Stevenson looking to get a timeout. He got Brandon Sleeth in. North Quincy's going to have to go 90 feet, but they've got an opportunity here. They certainly get your money's worth tonight. Uh, you know, again, a, a tough break for Quincy, but again, usually when you have the traveling goals, that means North Quincy playing good defense. I think you've got to take your hats off for the bridge. And they uh, took advantage of maybe an inexperienced guy, but, uh, but you know, a veteran in range of the And uh, 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 We've got three seconds left. North Quincy will be taking the ball out right in front of the new Dan Kelly 1,026-point banner. And they're going to be looking to go 90, point, 90 feet in Quincy's gym for the win. Well, I would say they're going to have to make it from 90 feet. Uh, Quincy will uh, you know, play pressure but no fouls. We uh, either could be there or unless there's a break, we could be in for everything. All right. Dave Centrella goes back to half court. He's the release valve, so North Quincy can't pull the string, as they say. The inbound goes to Wu. North happy to win over time at this time. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, Teddy Stevenson looks like he's not happy with what just occurred on the court. Um, but he's regaining his composure. It looked almost as if North was content to go into overtime. Uh, Quincy's got players in foul trouble. They've got Jurowitz out of the game. And Teddy may feel that if his kids play the game they can, they can do it in overtime. But from the look on his face, I think something else was supposed to happen there, at least with the first pass. I think Adam Wu felt that they didn't get the first pass down court where they wanted. So he calmly held the ball. He figured he'd either get fouled, but there'd be no turnover, and he wanted to make sure they get it to overtime. So. Well, I don't know as a coach, or uh, having coached a little bit, Jim, you don't hit many of those plays that can go the full length of the court in, you yeah. know, in two seconds. Uh, you know, at half court, sometimes they work. But uh, North looked like they were just kind of, they were uh, kind of, uh, you know, going, trying to stop the momentum, and uh, they'll tell you they feel confident going in overtime, maybe. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, Quincy's going to miss, uh, uh, you know, Adam, uh, their big guy, Adam. And then, Adam Jurowitz, uh, yep. Also is going to be missed by, uh, by North. Right. So, you know, here we are again, five more, uh, four minutes. Uh, we started the first game a long time ago today. 
the girl, freshman girls went to overtime, and here we are overtime for the end of the night. What a way to end the great day of basketball here in City Prince. I'll tell you, it's wonderful, and uh, seeing the fire in the eyes of these kids after they played 32 minutes of bang-bang basketball, it's great. Uh, they're all ready to go. O'Connell with a tap. Hollerin back to Wu. Great play by Joe Hollerin. Joe and uh, Matt Ramponi going after the ball, and Hollerin won that. Here's Brandon Sleeth looking to operate. He gets it to Yoey. North is back in their offense. Yoey missed, but gets the rebound. Follow, no good. In traffic, Robinson. Nice steal by O'Connell. Oh, and Adam Wu stepped over the backcourt line. Both teams have to kind of calm down right now. Four minutes is a long time. You know, the Quincy got the rebound, tried to outbound it quick. Just relax. The, you know, the seasoned uh, veterans, so to speak, will take over. Both teams should relax a little bit. Yeah, well, what we're seeing here, we haven't seen all game. Uh, North ran a half court set for uh, 20 seconds there, and now Quincy's going to. Ramponi trying to penetrate against Sleeth. He does. It's no good. Rebound hauler, and he's going to push it. He's got Wu on the left. He goes for the shot and he hits it. A nice job by Joe Hollerin. Great athleticism, great hoop. So he gets the first two in overtime and North Quincy with a two point lead, 68-66. North in a man to man. Penetration by Vecchioni. Draws the foul. Well, it shows you how much I know. I tell everybody to slow down and they're going like crazy right to the hoop. But that's, that's the way these teams play and uh, that's what we're going to see, I guess, for the next two minutes and 57, 27 seconds. Yeah, Adam Wu picks up his third. And that's a little short. A little short by Adam Vecchioni. Uh, one thing that uh, really stood Quincy in good stead second half was its foul shooting. They had a tremendous foul shooting percentage, but Vecchioni misses both. Nice rebound, though. Great hustle play by O'Connell. He looks inside, and his namesake for the Red Raiders comes up with a big steal. Here comes Adam Wu. Wu's got Hollerin on the wing, and he gives it to him. O'Connell picks for Hollerin. Nice pick and roll play. Nice job by Hollerin and O'Connell. O'Connell came out and set the pick on the wing. Well play by North Quincy and. Uh... I think it was Mark Robinson. Uh, uh, O'Connell. Forced a foul there at the end, but uh, well, let's get a play by North Quincy. O'Connell's at the line. He's going to shoot uh, two. He got fouled in the act of shooting. Uh, John O'Connell here, a uh, junior. He's the uh, the center for the team at 6'3. Good athlete. It looks like we had a. Uh, did Ramponi foul out? He picked up his fifth there. Jeez, that's tough. Uh, Sean Munchback, 5'9", sophomore guard. Let's see what happens. Uh, we've heard the name Munchback before in Quincy High School annals. Sean's brother Jimmy played last year. Uh, yeah. was a fine player. Sean is a sophomore. Great kid, great athlete. So, uh, tough Sean's position. Yeah, it's tough for a sophomore to come into this position. We'll see how he reacts, though. O'Connell sticks the first. North Quincy's scored the only points in overtime. They leaves it three. And he sticks the second. Maybe I'm wrong about those rims, Jack. That was a friendly bounce there. Wu with the pressure on Robertson. Skip pass over the top to O'Connell. O'Connell covered by Ketty. Looks to penetrate. Nice drop down. Wu with it, gets it to Ketty. I'll tell you, nice job by Adam Wu. He's earning his senior stripes tonight. There's Matt Yoey, who did a great job all second half with the Quincy pressure. They're running their wheel here. They're moving the ball around. Hollerin looking to penetrate on Robertson. Gets it out to O'Connell, over to Wu. Wu, little jumper. Can't get the drop. They ran a lot of time off the clock, though. We're at 150. North Quincy's up four. O'Connell penetrates again. Nice job. Dribble penetration. He just can't get it to drop. 
He's doing the right thing there, Jack. He's penetrating, trying to create something. Got to get to the boards too a little bit. There's no one there for that rebound, and uh, they're just kind of right now. Uh, Scott does the uh, side of the bench. Hollering and Yoey playing catch. They're working the clock. It's down to 10 seconds. Yoey looks for Wu around the pick. Wu looks to penetrate. He gives it to Yoey. Yoey gets tied up on the floor. They got to get a shot off, and they do. It's no good. Rebound O'Connell. O'Connell gets banged. No call. Wu with the rebound. And there's a call on the floor. I'll tell you, there's a lot of banging going on underneath. The refs are doing a good job of letting the boys play, as they say, in overtime. These five foot ten kids are playing above the rim. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, they're playing their hearts out. Four yeah. points right now, a minute to go. As we saw in regulation, they didn't have Adam Wu, a little short with his first. It's a big foul shot. And Wu misses the second. O'Connell with the rebound. Here's where the Jurowitz, the loss of Jurowitz, hurts Quincy. John O'Connell's had his way on the boards. Yeah, it looks like they called a foul on O'Connell. Teddy Stevenson can't believe it. He's talking to the official. John O'Connell was tapping the ball. It was clear height advantage, but uh, they called him for his fifth foul. So John O'Connell, with the North Quincy fans applauding, has to leave the game here in overtime. We're at a minute six. North Quincy comes back with Brandon Sleeth. Teddy Stevenson has Sleeth, Wu, Yoey, Keddy, and Holleran. John Francicini has got O'Connell. He's got Vecchioni. He's got the sophomore, Munchback. And then he's got his two veterans, Robertson and Dave Centrella. O'Connell sticks the second, and the lead is at three, 70-67. Yeah, uh, Holleran went cross court there. Adam Wu went up, and when he came down, he was out of bounds. Centrello with a clear look from three, and he drills it, and we're tied, and we're under a minute. Ball game tied again. Here's Adam Wu with the ball and the pressure. He pulls it out, and he throws it away, looking for Kenny. I'll tell you. Six seconds, there's too much time left to get excited. Yeah. <laughs> Centrella walks it up. 70 70, 46 seconds left. Centrella penetrates and lays it in. A big layup by Dave Centrella. Back comes Wu. Wu to Sleeth. And Sleeth calmly drops it in. Great job by Wu and Sleeth. Great job by Centrella. What a ball game, Jack. 17 O'Connell. O'Connell in traffic lays it in on the baseline. Four seconds. Sleep with a lot. Oh! In and out! And the ball game is over! What a ball game! Brandon Sleep in and out from three point land, and the Quincy Presidents hold their first lead of the game with no time on the clock in overtime for a huge win at home. Jimmy, I said at the end of regulation, watch for a ball you know, to do something. He's done it for him all year. And then when, when it came down in the first overtime, he took the ball like a veteran, ended up under the basket, three lost Quincy guys around him, and he went up and got the basket. Uh, you know, he's a player that uh, uh, people are certainly going to look for. But, you know, what do you say? I'll turn. North Quincy playing hard, and hey, today the turnovers uh, were the cause of the end, and the president, uh, well, the, the sun shine, sh kind of shined on them a little bit tonight, but uh, a, a typical great ball game, and what do you say, the city of Quincy, once again, uh, she's a great rivalry. 
I'll tell you, Kevin O'Connell has got a smile on his face, the type of thing you love to see. You got a feel for the North Quincy kids. Uh, this game was a tough one for them, but uh, a tremendous win for the Quincy Presidents. 74, 72, in overtime. We want to thank you. I want to thank you, Jack. I want to thank my cameraman and producer, Barry Welch. Uh, and we want to thank you, our viewers. We hope you're back when we're in the North Quincy gym for the rematch. But for now, goodbye from Monroe McLean Gymnasium, where the Quincy presidents had a big 74-72 win over the North Quincy Red Raiders.